We are live, and we've got got to blabber here for a minute to see if this is public. We're not getting good. We still have nobody watching. It is up. Okay. Boom! We're in. You're in. Still don't. It's still not showing any viewers. But that. Well, that's YouTube. <laughs> no, 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 no. All right, we got yeah. Some people are they're slowly popping in, trickling popping in, in now. All righty, we're I having. Think we're, a, we're wearing out the YouTube is what we're doing. Man, that twelve hours though, that's crazy. We're getting ready yeah, to break. Yeah, telling me I'm on coffee and water right now. The doctor's gonna have to make another visit pretty soon. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're turning that frat upside down now. We yep. ain't done yet. We ain't done yet. Bart <laughs> made some coffee. Yeah, we had to do some coffee. We got to get in and caffeinate. All righty. Water, food, and coffee. Got the comments Sweet. on the side, checking how everything's going. All right. And go ahead and introduce who we got here, and then we'll talk about what we're doing. Joining yep. us tonight, or for this episode, I think maybe I've been saying tonight, joining us for this episode, episode 10 Woo. of our 12 Hours of Boom, well, uh, of Instagram fame, Drinking Caveman, Ooh. a.k.a. Charles, all yeah, the way yeah. from... From Portland, is that right? Yep, from Portland, Oregon. Go ahead and introduce yourself and just give us a little, give us a Cliff Notes version of Charles. Yeah, so um, I'm Charles, also known as Drinking Caveman on Instagram. Um, Just a regular guy trying to review whiskeys. Uh, I've been collecting for about nine years now. Um, You know, just bit the bug with just uh, Blue Label and then moved to the U.S. Bourbons was a big thing. Then I got into Rise and then, uh, yeah, now here we are. Now, you say move to the U.S. Where did you move from? Yeah, so I was raised in Australia, and then I uh, lived in Asia for a bit, lived in China, lived in the Philippines, and then, uh, yeah, followed my love to move over to uh, the U.S. because I'm worldly and like that, just like you. Oh, so, yeah. oh, no. I'm married in, baby. That's how I got my worldly. My go. wife is from Puerto Rico, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> just in case he doesn't know, that makes me a little bit worldly. Just a tad. Although she tried to call me earlier, we were on a large live show with Mark, and I had to tell her, sorry, still live. All right, so what are, what are we drinking, Scott? And then I'm going to do the patented intro. What are we trying? We have, well, one of our episodes, we talked of how uh, a distillery needed to do a rye boo-boo. Right. A rye bourbon bourbon. Right, because we had and it. Yeah, the high Charles wax. Charles took it upon himself. He said, I'm making my own boo-boo rye. Boo-boo rye. He's blended it, and he sent us a sample of it. And what are we going to do? We're going to test it. Test it. What are we going to do? I'm going to test it. All right, so tell us, how did you make this blend? What did you do? What was the alchemy at work? So basically, when I went um, looking at your show, you know, rye, rye, boo-boo, boo-boo, rye, I was like, hey, why not make a mix of that? Um, so... Uh, I've been barrel aging for about six to eight months now. Um, I picked uh, a 101 a Wild Turkey uh, bourbon and then a uh, Wild Turkey 101 rye. Mixed those up to two to one, which is the rye, uh, the boo-boo rye. And then I aged it for this one's about a month and a half now. So it's still sitting in the barrel, um, but I uh, want to give you guys a taste and see how you like it. Um, you guys give your review later, but it definitely mellowed it out. You know, it's 101 proof, but um, with that barrel, it definitely – it feels like it dropped it down a bit. So, now sweet. Now, um, how how many gallons you got in that barrel there? So this one's a two liter. I'm basically um, playing around with two liters right now. I got um, the White Dog Mash Bill Number One, which you guys talked about. I think in episode two of the Twelve uh, Hours of Boom. Um, right. Then I got two other barrels over here, which is a Poor Man's Pappy, which is a Old Weller Antique uh, with a different uh, water mix. To kind of age it to make it a poor man's pappy or a 12, 10 year old pappy. And then the other one I have right here, as I mixed last night, was an old fashioned um, cocktail, uh, I guess, base. And then from there on, I'll, I either put a rum or another whiskey in there to age that. Hmm. Wow. That's cool. We've never done it. Couldn't even remember what I was looking for. <laughs> Watch out. We're flagging. We're flagging, brother. <laughs> it's all good. That's right. We're, we're just hoping to get out by the fire. With the music men. <laughs> yep. When we get out to the fire, we can let the, the vocal cords and the strumming take over and we can just kind of kind of kind of wave with it. 
We can just kind of kind of roll with it. There we go. Hold on. The doctor's in the house. Oh, oh dear God. How are oh, you? Lordy. How are you fellas doing? I'm doing pretty good. Wow. Oh. I don't know about that. The doctor looks like he's in more trouble than us. You're supposed to be watching us. Yeah, you're like the standard. I have been. That's what I've been <laughs> drinking so much. You get a little bored over there? No. Oh, okay. drinking. <laughs> That's good Do you enough. need to check our vitals? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like all right, you don't, all right. You don't need to check the heart rate, uh, palpitate. <laughs> Sorry about that. He just crashed the party, brother. It's all good. It's all good. He seems like he's having fun. Dr. Cousin Shane. <laughs> he could still bust out some Shakespeare. And uh, John Post asked, uh, the doctor was not wearing pants. Oh, Lord, I didn't even notice. I had a glance <laughs> hey, over there. He could be necking underneath that coat. <laughs> now I got coin three oh nine. You have three oh eight. Ooh, three oh eight. Any gun fans out I, there? I see. I got a two 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 over here as one of our cask one coins. Wow! In the house, original cask one coin. So let's we'll pour our sample of uh, your blend of the boo boo rye. Boo boo rye. And guys, be as honest as possible. Um, as you know, this is a learning experience for me. So. Um, Anything you guys could tell me, it'd be like, hey, it's short on this, or it's a bit too much of that, will allow me to improve my batches down the road. So it's got a great color to it. Yep, uh, definitely the the new charred barrel um, helps with that, so it does get a darker color. But then I, again, uh, Wild Turkey One Hundred and One is a decently dark bottle, so I think you added color. I wish I did. <laughs> <laughs> Put some caramel in there. Be tricking you guys. That's right. Hold on. My shirt's sagging. I don't want to show any nipple. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hold on. This is my turn to frown upside down deal here. What do you got on the nose, Scott? <laughs> Lana Lou says, Bart, no. Just no. What? It's the hat. Is the hat too much, Lana? Yeah, it's the hat. <laughs> my wife would be mad. And having a Puerto Rican hat with a shirt would be probably not good. What what a uh, what what do you think our ABV is here? We're looking at. Charles? I'm thinking it's around about uh, probably ninety something, ninety eight maybe. Okay. So mm -hmm. it it should knock it down a little peg. I didn't add water to it; it did mellow out. But then again, what the barrel aging does is kind of you know curve those spikes. Got it. It smells strong, stronger yep. than that. Uh, I get an oak. Rye, definitely. Okay. Yeah, I can pick up a little dill. Hmm. And cinnamon. What did Lana say? No, just no. <laughs> Woo! All right, Sparky. I get a very nice cinnamon caramel. Full mouth feel. Lingers a little bit velvety. And kind of a cream in the finish. Yeah. See that if you if you take it in too fast, that ABV catches you. Yeah, it does. That seems pretty high. Mm -hmm. It seems well, you said that you'd be about 49% yeah, if it was 49, yeah. 50. It's that finish that if you wait for that finish, it'll actually kick you back in the end. Um, it gives you a bit of that smoke coffee if you kind of think about it. Okay. Um, that's the interesting part about this experiment was that the finish, um, even though you thought it ended, if you little, give it a little chatter a bit, you get that dry note, and then bam, that coffee or that dark smoke kind of hits you. Not yeah. a peat smoke, but like a wood smoke. Now, how long have you been uh, blending and aging? Yeah, for um, about eight months now. Um, it was yeah. just a, a basic experiment. Looked on YouTube for something different. Um, poor man's pappy is what got me into it. You know, with the prices nowadays, like you guys were mentioning before, it's kind of crazy. So I was like, hey, why not try something different? And then, uh, yeah, try to do that. That's good. It's got a full, I mean, it's got a real strong flavor coming in. What? What are you laughing at my shirt? He took a look at me and he couldn't keep. Closing. There's a lot of comments going. <laughs> There's a lot of comments coming in. <laughs> Come on, man. I've worn this shirt before. <laughs> Somebody said they got, they got two words for you. Tanning booth. Oh, come on now. That's well, you can see the line. Someone I've got else, a little tan right there. Someone else said sun's out, guns out. <laughs> <laughs> I have to admit though, it is a bit distracting, but um yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I those, those eyes right there. 
I'm ruining uh, your episode, brother. I yeah. put on the shirt and I'm bringing her down. Some people have wondered how much you've had to drink to wear it. Some people have thought they've had haven't had enough to drink to see you. Now wear that it. I agree. Those viewers need to pour more. <laughs> I've worn this before, right? Yeah, I've been, been known while. to wear ridiculous stuff. <laughs> this is ridiculous. No, I love the shirt, especially the sleeves. I'm like, if, did you cut those? Or did you buy it like that? No, we found this. This now, was a goodwill yeah, find. Yeah, this is a goodwill find. And as soon as I saw this, I was a big fan. And then I was like, what's going on with the neck hole? <laughs> <laughs> and Scott was like, that's a woman's blouse. I'm like, no way. It's huge, man. Yeah. This isn't a moo moo. He didn't believe me. <laughs> Hold on. Someone else said it's a woman's what shirt? Night shirt. It's a woman's. Yeah. They say turn the frown upside down. Come on. <laughs> Is there, we, well, uh, Whiskey Scout says his wife would wear it <laughs> at night. <laughs> Well, uh, turns out Bart wears it at night as well. I wish, uh, I'm just sitting here looking at you. And I'm I, like, oh, know, I know. I know. Like it's... three weeks from now, I'll be watching this going, why didn't you stop me? And you're like, dude, I told you. And you just pushed ahead. <laughs> you know what the nice thing is? You can, take, you can take this shirt on and off without removing the hat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's like probably episode 13. Yeah, you can be like, hey, I don't like that shirt. I can just whip right, right off. <laughs> After show, Bart takes the shirt off. Wow, they got to pay at least 10 for that lawn. I'll be like, no, no. I like that out, though. Uh, what was it? Sun's out, guns out? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, I noticed he was reading comments, and he kind of took a little glance over at me, and then he erupted in a little chuckle, and I thought, okay, what's going on? There are so many comments coming in. So. Let Let's, it happen, man. Let them uh, comments roar. So what do you guys think so far? I'm adding a bit of water on my one, so. All right, yeah, let me put a little water in. Like I said, I was actually surprised it, it tastes like a really hot, like 67% ABV or something. And uh, and that, that surprised me. And I need to actually bring her down a little bit to work into the flavor. I like it. Um, I need, you know, and I love the rye, so I can get a little bit of those dill notes in there. Yep. Black pepper. Yeah. A little bit of black pepper. Now, when you add water, do you notice it? Does it uh, does it change it for you, or does it just? Yeah, the, 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 it becomes more velvety, I guess, or the mouth feel um, becomes thicker. Okay. Um, but um, the heat's still there; it does mellow it out, just like most whiskeys or most bourbons you put water into. But um, it doesn't really change too much. But then again, if you over water it, it, it will go down. Hmm. <laughs> All right, the, the crew here is chuckling at my attire still. I'm gonna Dude, it's to sexy, poop. man. I don't know what they're talking about. There you go. It's sexy. I'm owning it. I'm just going to own it. It'll be later on. I'll be like, damn. I wish I wish we could post these comments to the video. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I am glad that the live shows, uh, the comments don't carry over. I don't want to read what's being said. <laughs> 20, 22 Catch 22 just said we should do a contest for that shirt. Ooh, you could sign it. Yeah. I don't know if I want to let her go. I know. you. That one's good to pull out. <laughs> I bring it out. It's like a twice a year shirt. You go eBay bidding more. Oh, there you go. I don't know, though. I'd probably get like two fifty, And I mean $2.50. I was going to say, I'm like, $250? Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> yeah. that This and the Mount Manga shirts. You got to. Mm. Man, I was rocking those Manga shirts when I was 15, so don't worry about it. There you go. <laughs> Look at that. Did you hear when he was 15? Yes, I know. He's firing <laughs> off. I love it. He gave me a shot. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't even across the bow. That was like straight down. It was, the it's an Asian thing, man. So don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> I've still dared him to wear that thing out in public, and he hasn't done it. Yet. I'll do it. We gotta yeah, go to the mall. On, you know, you know, baggy pants and stuff, parachute pants. That's Boom. right. I'm gonna break out some vans, put them on. <laughs> Zoot suit. <laughs> no, I think this uh this this blend turned out very good, Charles. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah, it's very hard. Like when you when you have to sit for it for a month, you know what I mean. Like it's like, hey, will it taste good? Or not. Um, overall, the cost for was for it was about eighty dollars plus the barrel, so you got probably like one hundred fifty in or something like that. Nice. But then again, you can reuse the barrel for about four or five times, so it's yeah. just different. You know, not many people use the one one for a I guess a drinking spirit. It's more of a mixing spirit, so it's something different. Right now, will you? How long? I mean, as you're. Is your will you bottle what you've got inside your barrels, or do you continually sip off of them? 
Yeah, I, I bottle them after a while. Um, okay. If it gets to, um, I don't want to say the word, but if it gets to woody. <laughs> what? Um, what is that? Well, you mean, did I hear oakiness? <laughs> so, yeah, when it gets to uh, woody, uh, basically, it's time to bottle. Got it. Um, a few of my friends, just a hint of oak, it just kills it. So um, I kind of want to make sure I pertain to their tastes as well. So. Hmm. No, I missed it in there somewhere. How long has have you aged this? This one's about a month and a half. Okay. So I'm probably going to aim about two months to two months and a half for this one. Um, some of the white dogs that I do, it's about three months. Um, poor man's pappy is about a month and a bit. Kind of find that sweet spot. I've heard those little barrels really age pretty quick. Yeah, about a month is about a year and a year and a half is kind of like the aging quotation. Wow. Now, where do you um, just like you know? Um, was it uh, Hudson? They they use smaller oak barrels as well. A lot of smaller distilleries use um, small wooden barrels. Agi sure. Agitate them, put them on boats, so on. Right. Well, you got Lafroy using the quarter cask. Yep. So where do you where do you place yours while it, while it's aging? So I I usually sit them in my room. Um, I'm actually thinking about putting it in my car because my heart runs pretty hot. So maybe I want to shake those out. But I'm um, using my room. I got a temperature gauge in here, and then if it needs to be too hot. I put it in the garage and then um, what people do is they get a freezer. They put it in the freezer for a couple of days and then they put it back out to kind of make that breathe. Hmm. I've never heard of that. Just, let's say for those that turned in late, tuned, um, tuned. turned in, tuned in late, uh, Charles also known as drinking caveman on Instagram has done his own blend of bourbons and rice and aged them in a, is that a two gallon? A two liter oak cask, yep. Two liter oak cask for, and this one's been aged for about two months now. Yeah, month and a half. Month and a half. Hmm. Uh, he figures it's probably around a forty nine percent ABV. I, I agree, maybe even a little yeah, higher. It tastes a little hotter to me. Yeah, but I don't yeah, know. I if definitely have um, some of my um, was it my poor man's pappy with the antique one hundred seven. Um, I did it straight, and people usually said it's about a forty to forty three. Gotcha. But then again, it's probably at a 48. So it just it's surprising how different these turn out. Cool. <laughs> what? Go ahead and read them off, man. Read a couple of them comments. Dun preserve them in the record. Duncan Harmsworth said, for those who tuned in late, you missed side boob. <laughs> side boob, yeah. Side, yeah. I don't know what happened. <laughs> you missed a lot of quotes. It read a few out. more. It flopped no. out. It <laughs> flopped out. It flopped out, he uh. said. <laughs> <laughs> Man, these comments are awesome, though. I have to say, re re throw a couple out. What are you reading there? He's 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 editing. And it's like, do you think I'm sexy? <laughs> <laughs> what else do we have here? Bark's make, uh, making an exercise video now, so that's pretty interesting. There you go. Yep. I love that. Yeah. Yep. Yep. You know, Scotch has dummies dance a marathon. <laughs> Got to show the guns, man. That's right. A little jazzercise later. <laughs> we're gonna break out a headband but yeah uh, what do you guys think about the finish was it long was it short what's the that's usually the make it break it when it comes to these guys okay you know I, I i personally did not pick up those coffee notes and i was hoping to pick something like that up but i was not getting it did you get you, any burnt and burnt wood or anything like that either campfire i did not gotcha what else we got let me try there's a little more in here it's a medium length uh finish not too bad. Hangs in for a little bit. Definitely still, and I've added water. Um, still some pepper spice going on with it. Um, there is a darker coffee mm. note in there. Almost to maybe toffee instead. Okay. So, yeah. so uh, using your segments, is it worth it? What would you think the cost would be, or what would you price it at if you had to buy it? Oh, boy. It um it comes off a little more aged, um, rich and full. I would think if this was on the shelf, it'd probably be a eighty ninety dollar bottle. Wow, really? Seven hundred fifty milliliter. Yeah, that's definitely uh, decent with uh, the amount of uh, materials I put into it. So that's always a good thing, right? But I just think it's a great, you know, like with um. Other distilleries nowadays using rum cast, port cast, and so on. Um, I think that's the way we should start going as well. You know, we have the normal everyday standard bourbon stuff, but with people making sherry casts now, the full peated, and then even rum mix barrels, I think that's 
that's a great thing for our, um, you know, for our passion right now. Right. Well, man, I feel like I need to switch shirts or more comments coming in. And some people have noticed you're sweating. It's hot. We're under the lights. (laughs) We're under the studio lights here. (laughs) Was there a bead of sweat that like came down and just disappeared through the neck of the shirt? You look like you've been eating some habaneros. (laughs) (laughs) Ooh, I can tell you the crew on on set is enjoying it. Right, hey, Ryan Summer says she's a maniac. Maniac, Mark. <laughs> you missed some good ones. Yeah, I know. I got these guys reading comments over here laughing. <laughs> and that's great. And to be honest, this is what it's great about the community. You know what I mean? Like it just it feels like just a group of friends talking to each other, saying how you like it, you know, what you want different. Everyone has different opinions, but you know, everyone's kind of there holding that whiskey fabric, as you guys call it. Exactly. No, the whiskey fabric and the weave of it is phenomenal. So, I mean, and that's that's really what the 12 hours of boom is about too. You know, we wanted to <laughs> we wanted to bring again, do something unique and different, 12 shows, 12 hours, really roll them around fast, but also gives that chance to bring that whiskey fabric back in again. You can't even look at me regular can you? The the up here, man, you got to look me in the eyes. Can't stare at his blue eyes down there, man. Can't look right. at him. Keep can't your look eyes at- up. Hey, let's talk a little bit. You said you was going to bring up your – now, you se- you sell the barrels. Uh, no, I do not. So um, I work with uh, red, uh, redheadoakbarrels.com. Um, they give me a bit of a discount. Um, to For your viewers, I love to give them a discount as well. So uh, if you check out their website, um, it's 20% off if you use a, a promo code CAVEMAN, C-A-V-E-M-A-N. Um, yeah, so it's a redheadoakbarrels.com. Um, just check them out. Um, the reason why I like using their barrels compared to others is just the customer service. Um, the number one complaint people have with barrels is the leakage. Um, usually, uh, if you don't swell the barrel up right, um, it usually leaks around like the front ends and the back. So um, they actually send you a barrel wax or an extra um, spigot and stuff like that for no cost. So hmm. just that alone was just like, hey, I want to work with you guys for a little bit. I want to try some of your stuff out. So, you so Red Oak American Barrels? Redhead oak barrels. Redhead oak barrels. And what are some of the preparations you have to take? You know, before. Yeah, so it's real. It's real quick and easy. Um, usually, what you have to do is you put in warm water, it swells up the barrel, as you know, um, just prevents leaks after a while. Uh, maybe two or three rinses, depending on the barrel. Um, from there, you you tap in the spigot, and then uh, you you fill it with uh, with whiskey or what your cocktail is. Um, from there, just sit and wait for it for a while. You know, just stare at a uh, Bart T-shirt. There you go. Thank you. Apparently, uh, Scott's waiting for it for a while, and he's enjoying the comments. You want to preserve some of them into the record. You can do that uh, by, by the first one. I'm going to address is someone thinks I'm giving you the sexy eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can yeah. assure you. I, no, I, I am not I'm giving Bart it. the sexy eyes. Well, well, first of all, you're you're having a hard time looking me in the eye. Someone wants to know if you're an albino. <laughs> <laughs> I'm German, so I keep it as pale as possible. You want to see some skin melanoma come in? It's going to be on this body right here. Yeah. I just love the uh, how many Kermits were skin for that shirt, man. I'm just yeah. that, that was a good one. Uh, Amy Hollywood, Woody, that's that's you right there. Woo. See, there we go. Uh, mm. Keep man. on. And then I also gave gave you guys a couple of samples of other stuff I did. Um, if you guys could ever give me your feedback, that would be great. Sure. Uh, just well, to see how all the different barrels go. You sent us one. I think it's a Maker's Mark and a Rum blend. Yep, Maker's Mark and Rum. Um, I've been tr- um, just trading that over to people, you know, people asking for it. So um, it gives a bit of that rum spice, kind of like what this one with the uh, with a bit of the rye. And then I have a Poor Man's Pappy, which I think is probably one of my best batches. So hmm. Now, normally we would go ahead and open up, but because we're doing this 12 hours of boom, we have right. to limit ourselves to each. Yeah, one. I wouldn't want you guys to do that. And I, I even considered grabbing the Maker's Mark in the right. rum one, and, and, and but I think you've had enough. Right. Yeah, obviously when I put this on for the show, you want us to try some of these when we're a little bit more level-headed. It's not necessarily the amount consumed. It's the time frame we've been at this. <laughs> The sheer fact, yeah. although I've worn this before, so I'm just saying, whatever. It's, yeah, it's, but wearing it live is different. I, I think you're right. It's definitely because you, you get the feedback coming in real time. 
the, the real time feedback is happening. And I keep seeing this from him. It's like a convulsion deal as he reads like a good one that comes in and then the occasional look over and like the, uh, oh my God, you're going to regret this no. tomorrow. Swami has happy pants because of that shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think uh, people are just asking uh, if you can <laughs> go test for this t shirt. Do you prepare for this one or? Go Swami, go Swami. What's that, Charles? Yeah, sorry, uh, I over talked. Prep for the T-shirt. You know, you shaved your chest or anything like that. Is that kind of? It's working itself. There is no that's, shaving or anything. That's I, all I, natural. You, know, right you there. got a little <laughs> bit of normal coming in through here, so <laughs> it's not quite Tom Selleck. It's more. Yeah, it's more uh, like Boy a, George. A little bit of yeah. It's like it's drifted in. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, back to the barrels. Yeah. Did, did you touch on the uh, laser etching? Oh, yeah. So um, they do do a laser etching. Um, it, it depends on what the image is, but they're pretty, pretty, uh, they're pretty good on that. Um, so as you, as you see my Dream Caveman logo, um, as you know, with the um, laser etching on the barrels, it does look a bit faded on this one, but I got other ones behind me where it's a bit more crisper with the finer lines. So it just depends on that. But, um, yeah, I think it's a great addition. If you're not going to age something on it, at least uh, – you could put something there in your little man cave, woman cave. So, so and that's done through the website as well. Yep, order, through the website. Order the barrel and upload your image, and and they laser etch it. Now, what's a rough price area we're looking at on barrel with the etching? It's about sixty to eighty dollars around that range. Really, that's uh, not I'm too not bad. Not sure with the with the discount, but yeah, it's not it's not too bad. Um, if you want something that's more just just on the side, you can probably get a one liter barrel. That'd be fine. Uh, if you want to barrel it's something, you kind of want to go to a two and a three. It's usually about two to three uh, bottles to fill in one of these. Now, I'm going to mention we picked up another Patreon supporter, and I believe the comment is strictly due to the boldness of the shirt. I don't think so. <laughs> yes. Yeah, they were like, you've gone all in. I'm supporting you on Patreon. They probably think you're homeless and need the money. I wasn't sure where that sentence was going. I'll take all. <laughs> I'm homeless and I need the money. <laughs> Hold on, we might have yet another one coming in. <laughs> Here's two dollars. Go buy a new shirt. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That'll be in the Patreon um, goals. Get Brunchine a new shirt. How much before he will burn the turn that frown upside down <laughs> shirt? And uh, yeah, if you guys want to go into a giveaway or something like that, I don't mind uh, putting out a question out to your audience. Okay, what'd you have? You had a giveaway. You were, you're going to give something away. Yeah, so um, I got uh, some 33 books here, um, some tasting books uh, with my logo on it, just to help everybody out. I don't know how you guys do it, but um, I like cool. to see it visually. So um, just a question out to you guys in the chat over there. What episode number was it mentioned of the Boo Boo Rye? Mm. Episode do, number. Do, 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 episode number. Do, 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 and then you guys can see the chat probably faster than I can. So, and I think you guys know the answer already. So, Scott probably does. You know? No, I'll have to read them off uh, as they come in. And I can tell you the answer on that one. Number 12 just came in. I know that's way too low. 311. Well, he, he knows. Nope. 69. Now people are just yelling numbers now. 304. Close. Don't look at the shirt. Make your guess. Number 10. Did Dan E. make a guess? 201, 210, 131. I heard him. Dan E. said Kansas GQ. 39, 309, 666. We haven't got that high yet, oh, Swami. Lordy. 323. Evil Swami. 298, Evil. 296, 77, 256, 342. These are just blind guesses. 279. <laughs> Or not it, what was it? What get? What was the re, what was the review about, Charles? It the was name. about the High West Boo Rye right. release. Yes, High West so Boo Rye. Who, who put chick? Oh, sorry about that. You're uh, good. We're playing it right now. Is it three oh six? Oh, you're looking at the comments too, aren't you? Yeah, I'm trying to find the cl the number. I'm just scrolling through right now. Uh oh, and it is. It is Whiskey Wings. It's 306. That is correct. Really? Really, Whiskey no, Wings? No, he's too late. Someone else had it up top. It's on habit? I, I guess I missed it. Feral Barrel. Feral, Feral Barrel. Bar no, wait. Claire the Third no. has it up. No, wait. Wh yeah, Whiskey Wings. Clear up top. 
Wow, whiskey wings was first. Uh, still All right. Looking, that, still was looking, still We're looking. double checking. Yep, yep. Whiskey wings. Whiskey That's wings. That's what I got. It's probably the same thing you shows. Whiskey wings. Yep. Perfect. Whiskey wings. It is. All righty. And we will uh, we'll get the address and then forward that on to you. Does that work? Yep. No, that's perfect. Excellent. Well, we'll do that. And this is Whiskey Wings from England, right? Yep. This is our London buddy. Is actually well. So let's do. So let's do the one. You want to um, do a coin or a glass for Patreon? Um, let's do a coin, and we're going to be at thirty-five now. So you're. Th you don't want to do the 308? Oh, I just started That's the right. initial one. We're doing this one. Gold. They're getting gold on it. That makes it more valuable. Look at that. Signed. All right. So here we go. It's going to be 1 through 35. Siri, give me a number between 1 and 35. That would be 14. Boom. We haven't had that yet. 14. Put that on here. Congratulations, Mr. or Mrs. 14. Thank you. I'll have to go look. My phone's taking a hit here, too. Yeah, I got to plug my iPad in. <laughs> yeah. We need an extension cord. Everything's so running out of power. Number 14, Patreon. That was episode. We're going to start that fire up pretty 10. soon. Uh, Charles, we we've been asking 31. some other people, as far as whiskey goes, what's your favorite, say, genre of whiskey? Um, right now, it's definitely bourbons is kind of where I'm leaning towards. Um, if you asked me a couple months ago, it was Rise. Um, just after a while, you just kind of like, hey, I want to move on to the next thing. Uh, at the start, it was scotches, and then before that was Japanese whiskey. So it evolves. Um, you know, After a while, you're just like, hey, I want to try different types of bourbons or different types of Rise, get the nuances, learn and understand about that. You know, That's kind of why I watch you guys to say, hey, you know, with your bourbon shootout coming up, with your Rye shootout, mm -hmm. for instance, you know, I was like, hey, I want to get back into Rise. I actually purchased, I think, three three rides that you guys recommended just to understand, you know, hey, where are they actually getting this? What, what am I getting? So, uh, yeah, right now it's definitely bourbons. And then especially with me mixing stuff right now and barrel aging stuff, it's just like, hey, what do I want to mimic or try out? Hmm. Beautiful. Speaking of mimicking, any comments? Someone told me to plug my iPad into your shirt. <laughs> that would turn the frown upside down. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, man, you should auction that shirt. I bet you 250 Wow. We may eBay it at some point in time. It's going to have to survive a few of these booms, though. And then at some point, we'll retire it. Because you know every time. Now, if we do a boom again, this is going to be called for. I just but, hope you uh, put that shirt in the uh, the 16 bourbon shootout. Ooh, we might have to work it in. Ooh. We're not done yet. Oh, he doesn't want to ruin just, it. Just saying. Or right, Put it in the background if you want. There we go. We may hang it. <laughs> what um go back to the beginnings uh charles what got you into whiskey what got you to where you're at give us the uh rundown i guess mine's a bit you know i want to say simple but it's just the common thing with a father and son um when i was traveling a lot um for uh, college and stuff with my uh just uh by myself and stuff like that my dad always said hey could you put a bottle of scotch over at the uh, duty free and stuff like that so it was just, all right, you know, I wasn't a big whiskey person. I was a very big rum uh, person at that time. And then eventually me and my dad just sit at the bar, you know, exchange stories, you know, how his, his life when he was younger and stuff like that and how am I going through things. And, yeah, it was just a bonding experience. Um, drinking age is a lot uh, younger over in Australia, so I guess, you know, it was a start at younger age. Hmm. But, um, yeah, it was just a bonding experience. And, um, you know, me and my dad still share uh, drams once in a while when I go see him. Um, I used to try to pick up a bottle of blue label. That was kind of the thing back in the day, um, before we got to like a hundred dollars. Um, but yeah, no, uh, it was definitely that bonding experience. And then it kind of opened my doors and then I'll just, Hey, try this out. And then, like I said, before moving to the U S bourbons was the thing. So I was like, Hey, let me try, let me try this, I guess, inferior product back in the day. And then now you're like, Hey, bourbons have stepped up. Now other brands are stepping up too. So you bet. And your father yeah. still lives down in Australia right now. Uh, he's in the Philippines at the moment. Okay. So, uh, yeah, he's, uh, he likes the tropics. Oh, cool. Now, looking at the shelf behind you, two yep. things. First of all, on the top, you got several of the Westland Distillery releases there. Tell us about those because we don't have that in our area, and I hear real good stuff about it. 
And below that, I see you've got a bottle of the Joseph Magna cigar malt. Yeah, so um, Westland is about um, two hours away from me. It's up in Seattle. Um, they're in the uh, American whiskey category, which you guys talk about a lot, which is a growing category nowadays. Um, I fell in love with their sherry um, cast finish stuff. They use, I think it's a, I think it's a five malt um, blend. I could be wrong, so please don't quote me. And then uh, they usually age them in different types of casts. Um, we have the newest release now is Garyana, which is the um, the Oregon State wood. Um, it's I think it's thirty percent Garyana wood, and then it's oak, American oak, and those ones. And it's just um, trying to get different influences of different uh, types of woods or American woods instead of the standard the, everyday woods that you guys see. You've got the Joss Magnus back there too. Yes, I do. Um, I think this is batch number two. Yes, it is. So it's batch number two, bottle four eighty seven. So nice. it is still unopened. Um, a few of my friends um, are big into cognac finish type um, whiskeys. Mm -hmm. They heard of Joe's Magnus, and then they're like, hey, let's try it out. We, I think we have four or five bottles among us, and we're just opening one by one. And I think this just won a double gold or mm -hmm. a top whiskey award. So I yeah, know it's really prices. nice. It's got a real nice finish on it. I, you know, I actually, when we tried it and reviewed it, I actually felt like my palate wasn't refined enough to pick up all the different kind of things that were going on there. But, but the finish on there is really nice. Yeah, no, for me, um, not understanding cognac as much as other people, um, mm -hmm. it definitely said, Hey, why not I try this out? Um, like I've been hearing stories where, you know, cognac's not the big thing anymore. So they're kind of trimming down on that more focusing on whiskeys. Same thing with sherry wines at the moment. The only reason why people like sherry is because of those sherry whiskeys. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, drink your sherry, drink your cognac if you can, because it definitely um, provides barrels and infused barrels down the road. Sure. We got any other comments coming in? <laughs> in general, not necessarily specific. Uh, I was busy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that... uh, let's see. Hold on. We did have uh, Jason Whiskey Wise had commented something up here ways earlier. And I don't know where that one went. Sorry, Jason. And I forget what it was. Wow, you got a lot. Yeah. That's a lot of comments. That's good. I love this conversation, though. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Now, um, the cigar blend, uh, and sorry, I was lo looking at some comments when you were talking it from Joseph Magnus. It's pretty rare. I think it like that batch, there's only 200 and some bottles, I want to say, per batch. Yeah, this one here is uh, 545 right now for batch two. Oh, 545. Okay. Yeah. But and then, um, I think there's only one or two stores that actually shipped out of DC. So that's kind of why it was harder. Yeah. To find. We, and that did show up in our area, and we both bought a bottle of mm -hmm. it. Wow. That's, yeah, mine didn't even show up in my state. So, wow. I, yeah. I, to, I reached out to them. They had great customer service. I said, hey, here's the website you could take a look at. And then, uh, yeah, they uh, just kind of forwarded me over to those guys. Have you opened it? No, he hasn't. No, I have not, but my friends have. So um, I think, yeah, four or five bottles between us. Oh. They're kind of nursing it, So as you, as you say. Yeah, it says this is uh, number two, 230 out of 545. 230. All right. That was delicious. Um, I loved it. Definitely right now. Then I'm on a Michter's. Uh, there's a mixture, is how you guys say it, um, bourbon kind of fix right now, um, kind of like what they're doing. Uh, I got, a, I just got a uh, straight rye, and then their bourbon, and then just like everyone else, you know, I, I kind of collect uh, barrel proof bourbons. So the uh, the Stag Juniors, the Bottle of Wow, um, those kind of things are up my alley. Um, that stronger proof is definitely not in you know scotches yet, besides like probably a cast strength one. Sure. So I definitely feel as though that's the niche that I like the most about bourbons. Uh, George Kaplan has a good question, and he wants to know if you kept some of this mix outside of the barrel to compare it. Yes. So I actually have a bottle of uh, it right here, of just a standard mix, and then I actually have separate um, bottles of just to mix it in the in the house, just to see, hey, this is what it uh, you know starts off as day one. And then now, you know, hmm. two weeks and a half. Now that is a real good question. How does it compare? I mean, head to head. So to be honest, if you thought that one knocked your socks off, uh, these socks are not even in your room. So um, yeah, they're <laughs> they're pretty strong on this one. Um, that one hundred and one definitely packs a punch at the start. Here, I felt though that the barrel definitely um, curved it a bit, 
and uh, allowed it to mellow out. Hmm, really? Yep. That's excellent. And then, yeah, and to be honest, these um, these bottles are easy to find too. So the, the great thing about it is, hey, if I didn't like it, I can put it into a mixer. Or if I need to try something, I can just go down the road and pick a bottle. So. Sure. And what was it again besides the wild turkey? So it's both wild turkey. It's their 101 line. Uh -huh. So um, you kind of want to work with 100 plus proof in barrels. Um, it just gives that um, so it doesn't fade away. If you put in like a 43, like a Maker's Mark, you definitely lose um, the alcohol. So um, with the rum, it kind of added to that. So you have a mellow bourbon, but with a rum spice. So you kind of have that balance. Hmm. But if you put like just a Maker's by itself, it'll just mellow out like you added water or something like that. Hmm. But yeah, great question. That was good. Do you got any other ones rolling in? Yep, and I do have a Midwinters here, a Yippie Kaye. Um, I love the High West bottlings. You know, me not being from the U.S., um, the cowboy flicks are always kind of things you see. See a guy rip a, the ball top, you know, spit it out kind of thing. That's kind of just the, I guess, the uh, the sight I see when I see one of these bottles. So I try to pick up as many High Wests as I can. Hmm. I don't know. Uh, I think you guys got um, the Midwinters Act 4, Scene 3, I think it was. Uh, we got samples of that, yes. I don't remember which one it was. We haven't tasted it yet. That's from Liza. Yeah, the key thing I want to do is like try to do like Act 4 and then all the different scenes, see what the difference is. But um, hmm. it gets a bit pricey after a while, I think. Yes, it does. Yep. And that's um, the and that's the that. thing, sadly, with all the bourbons right now, is everyone knows that you can pay $100 plus. It seems like everyone's kind of aiming for that tier. I now, say I the, the 100 is the new 50. Ugh. Yeah, it's sad too because like you know some great bottles there, but then they're like, hey, why do I you know as a business you know they're like, why would I you know stoop that low you know? I'm surprised Elmer T. Lee is not you know a hundred dollars on the shelves even though it is like a fifty sixty dollar bottle. It is here. Yeah. See, and I can't I can't even find it. That's the problem. Like either stores buy it up. Um, where I live, there is uh, the Mount Loma Whiskey Library, which is one of the largest libraries here for whiskeys. And they buy bottles like crazy. So every liquor store, since it's uh, state controlled, basically sells to them. So we kind of, as the people living here, it kind of sucks sometimes. Mm. But then again, we always have an available place to try it if we need to. So that's good. Now, what maybe you asked, I miss what state are you in? I'm in Oregon. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, you know, it's a big trip, you know, only an hour or two trip up to um, Washington State or a couple hours down to California. So that's not that bad. Cool. Now we're coming up on our time. So why don't you, why don't you plug, um, you know, what you're doing or, or mention whatever you would like to highlight. And then talk, yeah. uh, give the, give the uh, barrel web address again yeah. and the code, the 20% off code for those watching. Yeah. So, um, so I'm drinking caveman at, uh, on Instagram. Um, I actually do a live show right now at six 30 Pacific standard time. It's about 30 to 45 minute show. Just chatting with everybody on Instagram. You know, um, sometimes I share what I'm going to be drinking so we can, um, you know, all kind of communicate with each other and just figure out, hey, what do you guys taste and what, what I don't. Um, and then for the barrels, it's redheadoakbarrels.com. Um, ca uh, caveman is the promo code for 20% off. So, um, yeah, two liter barrels, the best way to start off. You can get etching done as well. It's around 60 to $80. And if you guys have any questions, again, at Drinking Caveman on Instagram, uh, reach out. And, uh, yeah, thank you guys for having me. Cool. Thank awesome. You. Awesome. All right. Uh, well, we still got a minute. You want to keep going or? Yeah, no, um, I, I just want to show it out to you guys. Um, out of all the uh, whiskeys you guys had so far, what's uh, what's your favorite? Of just today in the boom? Just, just today in the boom. Oh, Balvini ton, ton 1509 batch three. And that's in the running for probably best whiskey I've had. Yeah, that I'm was a good. That was a good one to start off with, too. I'm glad we hadn't even had anything Ooh. before we tried that. Mm. So that was a good way to go. Yeah, I'm always worried about that 300 price point, 350 price point. But, you know, that's why you try to get samples or you ask people that you're like, hey, I have kind of the similar tastes. Let's see right. what you think. Yeah. Well, we had the the batch two and it was okay. Um, but I think that's probably what kept me from buying batch three when I saw it at $300. I didn't, I don't know that I felt batch two was a $300 bottle. Mm. Yeah, I'm a big Belvini fan. I'm not sure if you can see it, but. I got basically they're all their normal standard line with a triple cast. I even have a uh, Founders Reserve here that I got from one of our one of my friends. So I don't I don't see this one much around. So it's actually oh, better wow. than the. Uh, yeah, the, we can't uh, see that part of your show. Wow. So uh, if you guys can see that, but there you go, the Founders Reserve right there was discontinued. So. Huh. 
Very nice. Fun when you see something discontinued and it actually tastes really, really good. Now, so have you had the batch three then of the ton fifteen oh nine? I personally haven't. I haven't really want to touch those tons just because it's thirty, you know, three hundred dollars. That's yeah. I don't know. There's other things I could buy. You know, multiple bottles of something else. So Bart wouldn't score his. It wasn't that good. But I can tell you, as soon as it hit my well, lips, I knew I, it was good. I wanted to spend a little more time with it. <laughs> there are a few places <laughs> around here that sell it, so I could probably try and hunt it down. It's just that price point. So uh, maybe you should, I you should have spent some more time with that shirt before you decided hey, to wear it. Kind of <laughs> like what he said. This is this is basically not available anymore. <laughs> Uh -huh. Dude, I'm loving that shirt, man. See, and it got tons gotta, of comments. Put that on the title of this episode, you know, the shirt. shirt. Boom, Jazzer size. See, watch the dummies. Hey, Charles, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Scotch it, you guys. Scotch it, you Scotch gods. Salancha, dummies. dummies.